All right. And let's make it big. Start from the beginning. Fantastic. All right. Introduction to structural member properties. So what is structural member properties? Let's break that down for a minute. Structural meaning like something that holds strength, something that holds weight. That's structural, right? It's a member. A member can be anything. Like you guys are a member of a class. A member is a part of a bridge, a part of a house, whatever. It's the it's the boards, the beams, everything that's uh, the the two by fours, the two by sixes. All those are called members. And then properties, as you know, is just what makes up that uh, that particular characteristics. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about. See here. Okay, here's a big long definition. Moment of inertia. Have you done moment of inertia in science class? I think we did. You think you did? You recognize this moment of inertia is a mathematical property of a cross section measured in inches to the fourth. It gives important information about how that cross sectional area is distributed about a centroidal axis. Ooh, you don't have to write that down. You know why? Does it make any sense to you? It makes my head spin when I look at that. So let's make it simpler, right? Um, moment of inertia. Think about this. A moment is a twisting force. Do you remember when I brought the army truck and we took the torque wrenches out there and you guys used the torque wrench? Did we call that a moment? We should have. If we didn't, I think I told you a twisting force is called a moment. So if I got this as my wrench, here's my nut, and I'm twisting something, that twisting force is called a moment, okay? So I've got a moment, and then inertia. You guys know what inertia is, right? Yes. Okay, tell me about inertia, boy. Like, if you have weights on the outside of the spinning wheel, it'll spin. Okay. Is he saying something will spin? He's on the right track there. What else? Brewer. Yeah. Kill it, man. What is that? Newton something something? Newton's first law, there you go, Newton's first law. So think about this, okay, moment is a twisting force. Inertia is the ability to stay still or keep moving when you're moving. So if I'm talking about a structural property of a member, pretend this is a two by four for a minute, right? I'm gonna use this, this is a two by four. And uh, moment, a twisting force, but it wants to stay still. So I'm really describing the stiffness. Right, guys at home, does that make sense? I'm describing the stiffness of something by saying it resists, it resists the twisting. It resists the twisting, right? It resists, it's stiff. It's stiff, it doesn't want to bend. So that's moment of inertia, simplified. You can write that down if you want, but really there's a simpler way to say it, which is it's the stiffen of an object. And the other part of this, it's related to its shape. So stiffness, the moment of inertia, we use the letter I, moment of inertia is the stiffness, right? It bends this way, but it doesn't bend this way. Stiffness of an object related to its shape. Furthermore, whoop, furthermore, the higher the number, the stiffer it is. So I'm gonna give you a number for moment of inertia. If it's 100, 100 is better than 20. The higher the number, the more resistant, the more stiffer it is, right? More, greater resistance to deformation. Well, you guys know what's coming next, don't you? If I tell you there's a mathematical property, blah, 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 what comes next? There's gonna be a formula. It's gonna be a formula. That's okay, formulas are good. Formulas help us figure things out. Okay. I want to tell you this though, when we're talking about moment of inertia principles, uh, it really is related to the shape of an object, but also the orientation. So what I want you to gather from this slide is there are two things. I have this board right here. Anybody know what this is? See the end of it? Anybody tell me what the application of this is? It's mass, you know this stuff, don't you? Dex? Dex. Dex. Yeah, Dex, right? This is that fake wood, composite wood that goes on a deck or a porch. You guys seen this stuff before? So sometimes on newer homes or older homes, if they want to repair it, they use these boards for the deck. So this would be the floor. This would be what I'd walk on. It's not wood at all. 
It's actually a composite material. Uh, it can be made of different things. Some of the things they put in there, sawdust, uh, plastic, glue, rosin. It's just a mixture of stuff, right? But it makes a uh, it makes a nice, pretty board that doesn't rot. They come in pretty colors. You can get red or gray or blue or whatever kind of color you want. It stays real nice. It doesn't rot out like a board. You don't have to stain it or seal it or waterproof it all the time. Um, so it's a, it's a nice stepping board. But as you'll see, all is not well, right? It, it does have, it does have a, a downfall. You'll see in a minute. But anyway, if I take this board and I orient it up and down like this, that's called a joist. If I orient it like this, if I lay it flat like this, it's called a plank. Like Mr. Claney likes to say, our mighty walk the plank, right? So think of the pirate walking out the plank, it's flat like this. Okay, so joist or plank. And it's important because that changes the moment of inertia, how we orient something. Just like this one here. Just like this one here, you guys recognize this one, right? So one and a half by three and a half, two by four. If I put the two by four like this in the home, and if I build it, I'm building the home and I put it this way, it is a joist. If I put it this way, it's a plank. It just helps us to remember because that's going to affect the moment of inertia. So you guys at home, all I'm doing right there is I was just showing them a, an example of those two positions. You can see it on the screen uh, slideshow there. Joist is up and down, plank is flat. Okay, what I also want you to notice about this is that chart at the bottom. When we talk about moment of inertia, we need to know, we need to know the width and the height. We need these two values to calculate. And if I look at these two beams, beam A, beam B, A and B, they're both plugged with spur. That's type of pine, right? That's a softwood pine. Uh, two by fours are made of that. They're both eight feet long. All I did was I switched because when I turn it on its side, I'm switching the length and the, the height and the width. So these two numbers, guys at home, the width and the height just get flip flopped. But this is the important part. The square area is the same. So if I take a cross section, anybody know what the cross section is? Cross section. I'll give you guys at home your first, cho first choice. Anybody, virtual people, know what a cross section is? You're going to put it in the chat, aren't they? You have to say it out loud. I can't read the chat. A section of I mean, the board. The grain. Real loud. Is it a section of the board that goes across the grain? Across the grain, yeah. Anybody from out here? Cross section from drawing. Okay. Yeah, a cross section is part of a drawing where I cut something in half to look inside. So if I want to think about last year in Inventor. When you were drawing something and you want to see what's inside, you could slice it and make it. We might not have gotten that far, but a cross section, bear with me. Whoop. Cross section is just cutting something, an object, and looking inside. So if I take this box of tissues and I show you this, this end right here, guys at home, I'm just showing a box of tissues. And if I look at the end, uh, you just see the end of the box, right? You can't really tell what's inside. It could be tissues, it could be jelly beans, it could be marshmallows, you don't know, right? But if I cut it in half, that's a cross section because now I'm looking inside, the drawing is looking inside and you would see tissues folded up like that, right? If it was this cup right here, and I showed you this cup, you said, that's a cup. I said, what's inside? You said, I don't know, I need a cross section. Give me a cross section. I'd cut it in half. And you would see markers are inside, right? So cross section, not to get off track, cross section is a slice of an object so you can see what's inside. You can see the internals. So anyway, if I take this board and I take a cross section, the cross section of this is basically going to look like the end. My cross section right here, same. Cross section here, same. There's nothing unique about this. It's homogeneous, right? It's the same all the way through. But some objects might change. Anyway, if I take the cross section, go back to that slide. The cross section is the area, right? The length times the width 
There's a length, a width times the height, area of a rectangle. You guys probably remember that. I know you do. Okay, let's jump ahead again. Okay, what distinguishes beam A from beam B? We already said it, right? It's the orientation. How did I orient it? How did I position it? Did I position it upright or flat? Okay, so here is the simulation. So what we got going on here is those two beams shown in blue and we're applying some force. That's the yellow arrow. We're applying an equal force to both of them. Beam, uh, which one was which? Beam B, I think, was up and down, wasn't it? Yes. No? no okay, A is the one up and down. A is much stiffer than B. Again, because of the orientation, because of the way that I've located. All right, so, so good so far. What's next? Well, next is the calculation. I told you, I warned you, right? I warned you the calculation was coming. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> Calculating moment of inertia. We, you guys probably have seen this before and never even knew it. This poster was up here all year, last year. Calculating moment of inertia rectangles. The class that was sophomores last year that are now juniors, they did it. You guys probably like, I don't know what that poster means. Maybe we'll get to it someday. Here's the here's the formula. All right. Now the good news is, is you don't have to memorize this. I'm gonna tell you an old timer story. Like back in the day, we had to memorize formulas. Whoa. But now you don't. You don't have to memorize it anymore. You have this, or you have a laptop, or you have a tablet, or you have a desktop, or you can go to the library and get on that. The formulas are out there, right? You don't need to memorize them anymore. They're at your fingertips. But you do have to understand how it works. Because the formula, if I just give you the formula, but you don't know what to put into the formula, no good, no go, no bueno, as Mr. Maddox would say. But this one's easy, you can do this. I is the moment of inertia. So you guys at home, I'm just going through the formula. You see the I X X. That's the moment of inertia. OK, and it's equal to B is the base. That's the horizontal part. And H, the height, divided by 12. Notice I've got that uh, cube in there. So I have, to, I have to cube the height first. H times H times H cube to get the height. And then I multiply the base, and then I divide by 12. So pretty simple formula, base times the height cubed divided by 12. That gives me the moment of inertia. That's not that phone beside you, is it? That's the logistics phone. Logistics, get your phone. So here we have the beam A, and we have it. What orientation is this? Up and down. With, what do we call that? Start with a J. Joist. 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 We have a joist, in, uh, joist orientation. So there's a beam and the joist orientation. And then you guys can do all this in your head, probably. You don't even need a calculator. One and a half times five and a half cubed divided by 12, blah, 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 blah. I knew that. 249.562 five inches to the fourth. Gives me a number, okay? I told you there was a number. This number is your moment of inertia. 21 inches to the fourth. That's a moment of inertia. What's that mean? Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that, but I wanted you to see something else first. Okay. Keep that in your head. 21 inches to the fourth. 21 inches to the fourth. 21 inches to the fourth. Remember, it's a joist up and down. All right, let's do the same thing. Plank, same formula. Same formula, right? Aren't we going to get the same number? Isn't this going to be the same? It's the same board. One number is cubed. You got it, Floyd. Floyd is on top of it. I think you guys are all like Heartline. We knew that. Everybody knows that. Well, there we go. The number changed because 
B and H got flipped. The base is now the height, the height is now the base. And so, when we go through all this fun math, change. Remember it was 21? Now it's 1.5. So let's look at, what does that mean? Well, that means, here, here's, the, here's the proof, right? I could have just told you, hey, the one, the joist is stiffer. And I showed you, I took this thing right here, and I said, look, everybody knows this. Like this, it's weak. Like this, it's strong. So I was like, yeah, I knew that. Here's the proof. The moment of inertia of beam A is 21. The moment of inertia of beam B, 1.5. 14, 14 times stronger, to put it this way. So we proved it, right? Here it is. One more slide. 14 times stiffer. 14 times. It's not bad. Just put, put the board the right way. Makes it stronger. All right, what else affects this? What about the shape? We've just been talking about a rectangle. I said, what's the cross section? Right? What is the end? What does it look like if I cut it? Look inside. This was a rectangle. That's the good news. That formula, we can do this formula pretty good. The sad news is the rest of these, it's way more difficult. Probably something that you can learn in college. It's way above our uh, way above our course level here. So we're going to be able to do rectangles, but these other ones we won't be able to do. But some of these, does anybody know any of these uh, other? Are these pretty strong? What's the red one? I beam. See any I beams around? You ever seen an I beam? Bridges. One right here. One right there, right above my head. They're all over the place. Look around, you'll see them on bridges. If you have an unfinished basement, there's probably a pretty good chance there's an I-beam right down the middle of your basement with those posts hanging up. Or if you go and someone has a big garage, you might see one, or uh, wherever else. The I-beam is a pretty strong and pretty lightweight. It's a, it's a favorite building member, favorite structural member. I don't know why I put, I put these up here reason, and then I keep tripping over them. Um, okay, so there's, uh, there's an angle bracket in there. The blue one is sort of an angle. The orange one is a uh, box tube. Anybody know the pink one, what we call that? Pink iron. Close. It does have a C in it. C channel. C channel. I think a few of it was on the tip of your tongue. C channel. Uh, all of those are different ways of gaining strength through the shape of the object. So I'm going to go over here a minute. I just want to re review this. Moment of inertia. This step. Remember, we're talking about the cross sectional area, basically the shape. What is the shape? The shape can affect it too. We talked about rectangles and how we can calculate a rectangle pretty easy um, but if it's not a rectangle is there any advantage yeah doing more with less let's compare the moment of inertia of three joists given shapes wood eye beams are in the center have you ever seen one of these a wood I beam. It's basically three pieces of wood glued together. So it's like a two by four kind of object on the bottom. Maybe like one by three, two by three. And there's a piece of plywood in the middle. And then there's another two by four, something like on the top. And they glue all those together. It's super strong and they're super lightweight. Uh, how much time we got? Five minutes. Okay, good. Uh, super lightweight. So let's look at the numbers here for a minute, because again, the numbers are going to tell us something. So if you look, look at the first one, and you guys at home can follow this. The first one is two and a half by four. We can do some quick math on that one. What is the uh, what is the square uh, the area? What's the square square inches of that? Ten, right? You were going to say ten. That's what I was going to say. The next one, I'm going to give you a hint. There's some more calculation, but that one is ten also. 
And the next one after that is 23 and an eighth. 23.8. Okay, so just real quickly, this one is the same square area as this one for you at home. It's uh, the first one and the second one are the same square area, right? So if I calculate what's the area of that cross section, again, I'm cutting, looking at the end of it, chop it off and look. The area is the same. So what does that mean? It's probably the same weight per section, right? So if I took a 10 feet long beam like this, and a 10 feet long beam like this, and they're both the same square area and the same material, they're probably going to be the same weight. So I can use this one or I can use this one for the same weight, probably about the same cost, right? All right. Or I could use, I could just say, hey, I'm just going to make this thing super strong, right? If you were building a bridge and you didn't know anything about engineering, just build it big as you can. Get the biggest, biggest steel beam you could. Then you wouldn't have to worry. Fortunately, engineers can't do that. They have to do more up there in the red. They have to do more with less. We can't just put the giant beam on there and call it good. It costs too much. It's too heavy. Construction costs. So how can we get a strong beam that's strong like this, but less square area, less weight, less cost? Well, there's your I beam. We stretch it. We stretch it. We stretch it to get that um, to get that moment of inertia. This one has a high moment of inertia for its area. See these two? The first one and the second one I'm talking about for you guys at home. The first one is area of 10 square inches. The second one is area of 10 square inches. But the moment of inertia, this one's 10 times more, 10 times stronger in bending. 10 times stronger in bending, even though it's the same square area, the same amount of stuff, the same amount of material. Right? And you can see, I can jump off and make a solid one, but look how much the area jumped. The area is more than twice as much, but I didn't gain that much strength. 50% more strength, but I doubled the area. So going big isn't always the answer. Just put a bigger beam in. That's not always the answer. Sometimes you got to be smart. That's where we use our math and we use our engineering formula and we find something that works better. Okay. Let me see what else we're going to get going here. So the next thing we're going to talk about next time, I don't know whether it's uh, tomorrow or maybe uh, Monday, maybe Monday, we're going to talk about modulus of elasticity. So I'll, I'll stop here for a minute and review, but um, let's go back to this one for a minute. All right, let's uh, stop sharing. I want to show you guys something else, and uh, people at home get the best view this time. So, people at home, you're going to the floor down there. So, what I got a little setup here, guys, is I got a couple of little blocks here. I just kind of fabbed up real quick. Took a couple uh, four by fours, tacked on a couple little two by fours. This is going to hold this beam up right for me. So. So if I put this beam this way, okay, and I support it, remember what that supports are called in a bridge? Uh, abutments, right? Okay. And the distance from one abutment to the other, that distance is called a span. So the span on this one is about eight feet. This is a 10 foot two by four. I got a span of about eight feet here. All right, now I want, to, I want you to watch the deflection on this. If you guys want to stand up, you can. But basically, here's Heartline Circus de Death Defying Act of Treachery, right? Where am I starting out here? The beam unloaded is about seven inches. About seven inches unloaded. Can you see that, ladies and gentlemen at home? What's that now? Can you read it? I'll tell you, it's about five. So by putting 200 pounds on this beam at eight foot span, it deflected or de two inches. Now, I think you want me to hurt myself, so I have to go to the hospital, and then you have a substitute. Is that right? How terrible, Brewer, that you would wish uh, your injury to your teacher. 
All right, now, people at home, can you see this? All right, now I'm at about three and a half. About three and a half. I'm going to stand on this beam again. And I lost about a half an inch, didn't I? So I went from three inches, three and a half inches to three inches. So we've just confirmed in real life what we saw on the screen was that by flipping the board, the moment of inertia changes and therefore the amount of bending changes. So when I had it like this and I stood in the middle, it deflected two inches. In other words, it bowed, it bent two inches in the middle. When I turned it this way, it only bent a half an inch. So that's kind of cool. We can actually calculate that, right? But you can't just build a bridge and then measure it. You have to engineer it. You have to get, think of it. So next time, we can use the moment of inertia to calculate how far. We could actually use those numbers to calculate. Now, any questions on any of that? A minute or two left. How'd you guys like that? You got to see front row. You got a better view than the people right in the building. Thank you, maybe, or something. Thanks, Heartline. All right. You guys are so quiet. You're even more quiet than these guys. Any questions? Any questions? Thanks, Noah. Thanks, McKenna. All right. Any questions? Moment of inertia, the resistance to bending. Okay, resistance to bending. And it's relate, rely, uh, related to the shape. A lot of that cross sectional area. Is it an I beam? Is it a rectangle? Is the rectangle this way? Is the rectangle this way? Moment of inertia is thinking about the shape and the orientation. What's the cross section look like and how is it oriented? That's moment of inertia, moment of inertia, moment of inertia, moment of inertia. Okay? And it's very important in our bridge design, or house design, or building design, or whatever, engineer, uh, airplane design, car frame, truck frame, trailers, whatever. We're going to think about that bending, right? We don't really want things to bend. It scares us. If we walk across a bridge, or we drive across a bridge, and it goes like this, ah, kind of scary. Like, I'm not going over that bridge anymore, right? So we don't want things necessarily to deflect. We want to minimize that, right? We want it at an acceptable level. If you drove over a bridge and it deflected a quarter of an inch, would you care? Probably wouldn't even notice it. If it deflected like three feet, probably would feel it. Probably would feel it. All right, any other questions? 